Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Monday mountain weather update. First, I want to start with this uh, just gorgeous sunrise up here at Winter Park. You're up there at the Lunch Rock View and you've got some oranges up there. It is a windy morning across parts of the front range of Colorado. Wind gusts of 50, 60 miles an hour. But uh, it's providing a nice wave type cloudiness there. Uh, act like a canvas this morning. All right, let me take you to uh, Jackson Hole. So they picked up another four inches overnight up there and that officially puts them over the 400 inch mark at the summit so 404 that's almost two feet of snow in the last 48 hours up there at jackson hole and you're not done you've got you've still got heavy additional snow in the forecast in fact let me show you um, uh, this is radar across the west this is our storm system our next storm system uh, it's nailing parts of tahoe all the way down through the sierra Got snow in southern Oregon, northern California, snow in Idaho, snow over the Tetons, you can see that. And you've got snow over parts of Montana. The whole thing is going to rotate and come right across Utah and through Colorado with a lot of wind and some snow over the next uh, two or three days. Up in the northeast, it is a warm scenario here with mainly rain. Waiting for this low pressure to kind of come up the coast. It's just kind of riding the coastline. Um, but rain up there in a lot of the ski areas. I actually do have a, a chance for moderate snow accumulations, maybe even slightly heavy, uh, at some of the resorts late 20 into 21. So we'll look at that shot coming up here in just a minute. But this is water vapor satellite imagery uh, at the low levels. So you're looking at the oranges and reds. These are going to be your drier air. And the moisture is in the whites and the blues. So it's pretty obvious. But there's our area of low pressure right there. Nailing California, Idaho, parts of Montana, Wyoming. Now, eventually, it's going to slide through and hit Utah, Colorado, and then it's going to move out into the heartland, and it's going to deliver a lot of wind and wildfire risk. And eventually, on the, the north-northwest side of it, we're going to see the possibility of blizzard conditions as it moves out into the plains. So there's a lot going on with that, and there's another storm system behind it. That becomes a storm also that follows a very similar trajectory into the uh, the west and intermountain west down the road. And there's probably an additional storm system even behind that. Okay, let me just talk about uh, my expectations here. So all part of a powerful jet stream pattern with two to three different storm systems through 323. That's the active period. Then it looks like a high pressure ridge is going to start to build into the west. Uh, between late 323 and 328, so a week's worth of high pressure across the west. Warmer temps, all of that uh, comes along with it. It's my snow timeline, best odds of new snow for the Big Sky area, Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, the Pacific Northwest, Tahoe, and the Northeast. I won't go through all these, but generally you can see the two to three different storm systems. Uh, you can see it in Big Sky, you can see it in the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado. So for example, in the Wasatch, you've got uh, heavy snow coming tonight through tomorrow. Uh, you've got heavy snow on the 20th, and then light to moderate snow on the 22nd. And the uh, the Tahoe area, you've got heavy snow continuing today, and then some light to moderate snow 1920. And then we're into high pressure after that. In the northeast, it's rain today, and then in moderate to heavy accumulations between late 20 and 21. Let's drill down to Alta, Utah. This is effective about 9,000 feet up there. So uh, we're really going to have to wait. Again, the snow doesn't come in until tonight. But it does snow hard throughout the day tomorrow, and it might trickle into early 19. The winds will increase up to about 30, 35 late tonight, and then up to 40 to 50 throughout the day on Tuesday. It's going to be very windy. Uh, the winds start out of the west-southwest, and then they turn out of the northwest, so we should be able to generate some good snowfall out of this. High temps today are warm at 35, falling all day tomorrow through the teens into the single digits. So a pretty good uh, scenario for accumulation and ratios tomorrow. And then it's up to about 19 on Wednesday, similar on Thursday. And there's another storm, at least one more storm behind this with heavy accumulation. So this generates about 18 inches. Well, we're going to add to that with, a, with a, an additional storm system. All right, let's talk about the jet stream forecast. So we'll start this at, uh, we'll start this today. Uh, and there's our storm system. You can see the dip in the jet stream right off the California coast. So this is, these are the winds up at about 30,000 feet in the atmosphere, the jet stream level. These are what really helps to guide these storm systems around the country, around the globe. Um, and so what I'm looking for are these dips in the jet stream and the, and the brighter colors, the yellows, the oranges, representing the stronger winds. All right, here we are by Tuesday. 
that storm system moves into the Intermountain West. So that's that's Utah, that's Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado. Everybody gets hit. Um, by the time we get into Wednesday, it's already out into the Great Plains with fire danger, high winds, and a blizzard potentially on the northwest side of the storm. You can already see the next storm approaching the west coast. You can see the dip in the jet there. Let's go into Thursday. And then that storm moves into the Pacific Northwest, and it will have an effect across the northern tier and probably moving down into the Intermountain West as well, right there. Uh, another little storm system Friday, Saturday across the Pacific Northwest and northern tier. There's Sunday. There's Monday. Starting to see the arcing to the net, uh, arcing to the north of the jet stream. That's going to be your high pressure ridge um, that eventually settles in with that by the time we get into early next week. Okay, let me take it a snow, a snow accumulation over time. So again on this, your light blues are going to be under 3 inches of accumulation. Greens are 3 to 6, yellow is 6 plus, and red is 10 plus. So we'll start this early today, Monday, March 17th. You've got heavy snow through the Sierra and snow through parts of Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. All right, let's move it through time. Now, now it hits Utah squarely. This is early uh, on Tuesday, March 18th. Another round of heavy snow for the Tetons. Then it starts to build into Colorado. This is lunchtime on Tuesday. There's late on Tuesday. Potentially, and you can, and speaking about, speaking of Denver and the I-25 corridor, it's, we'll probably see rain over to some snow in Denver, but not expecting anything heavy. Light accumulations, if anything. But over the eastern plains of Colorado, we'll probably see some snow, some rain over to snow accumulation and high winds over the eastern plains. Okay, there's early Wednesday, March 19th. Storm system moves out into the plains. Now there's that ribbon of heavy snow and blizzard conditions across Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Okay, there it is, moving north. All right, there's early on Thursday, March 20th. Next storm system up in the Pacific Northwest. Starts to hit a lot of the uh, the northern tier and the interior states, kind of brushing Utah, Colorado there, late on the 20th into the 21st. Another storm system hits the Pacific Northwest. This is uh, midday, Friday, March 21st. Here we are early Saturday. That storm starts to move across the northern tier and then starts to brush Utah, Colorado. This is early Saturday, the 22nd. There's late on Saturday, and that storm system moves out. Okay, here we are early on Monday, March 24th. A lot of the action has shifted up into the Pacific Northwest, and especially British Columbia, as we start to see that, that high pressure ridging, it's pushing everything to the north and locking away the cold air. Yeah, I mean, you, it's pretty obvious. There's nothing going on by the time we get 24, 25, and there's early on the 26th, high pressure ridging. Okay, here are my numbers. So all of today through the 23rd. So keep in mind, two or three different storm systems here. So looking at one to three feet through the Wasatch with the higher end totals up in Little and Big Cottonwood Canyons. Um, in Colorado, the bigger numbers are across the central to northern mountains with less to the south. So it's kind of like a 10 to 20 inch range for the central to northern mountain zones and then 8 to 12 for southwest Colorado and less as you go down towards Taos, Ski Santa Fe, and Angel Fire. Could still see 10 to 12 inches through Bryan Head, southern Utah, less in the Snow Bowl of Arizona. In the Sierra, you've got heavy snow coming down now, but uh, beyond that uh, and what's left over today, maybe 10 to 20 inches of accumulation through parts of Mammoth, Tahoe, and Shasta. Up in the Pacific Northwest, two to three, maybe four feet of accumulation through parts of Oregon and Washington State. I haven't changed much through interior BC, still looking at 12 to 15 inches through Fernie, Red Mountain Kicking Horse, and Revelstoke. Three to seven through Sunshine and Marmont, uh, 10 to 12 through a lot of Montana, and still looking good in Idaho, one to two feet of accumulation. And the Tetons thinking about 20 inches through the 23rd. Uh, so some pretty good uh, snowfall right there. Now, up in the northeast, the numbers have increased as a result of the storm system and the colder air that comes in late 20 into early 21. Could see up to 12 inches on Mount Washington, 10 around Wildcat, Cranmore, Sunday River, uh, 6, 7, 8 through a lot of Vermont, and less in upstate New York. So 
the situation has improved a little bit for late 20 into 21. All right, guys, we're going to end on the big western map here through the 23rd. Again, two or three different storm systems and still some good powder. Enjoy it while we've got it before the big high pressure moves in. Guys, take care and have a great day.